Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lisa Hughes, WBZ TV news anchor and a boss biz woman. Welcome to the 2021 Pinnacle Awards. Today's event is brought to you by the Women's Network at the Greater Boston Chamber of Commerce. It is always an honor to host the Pinnacle Awards, including the virtual awards this year. We may not be all together in one room, but we are together highlighting and celebrating the achievements of nine leading women in Boston. No question, this past year has looked and felt so different for all of us. And even though we are socially distanced right now, it doesn't mean we can't generate some buzz and send some of this great Pinnacle Award energy into the wider world. So in the chat feature on the right-hand side of your screen, we invite you to share a bit about where you're tuning in today. And if you're in an exotic place where, say, it's 80 degrees, we're going to live vicariously through you. And we do want to hear from you and see how far this powerful women's network reaches. Throughout today's program, make sure you use the hashtag Pinnacle Awards and tag at Boston Chamber so that we can retweet your posts. Let's see if we can get the Pinnacle Awards trending on Twitter again this year. Our incredible honorees are women we admire. They are committed leaders who stepped up even more in a difficult year. And I think you'll find their words of wisdom inspiring and uplifting in these early days of 2021. So with that, to get the program started, I would like to introduce a true ally to the virtual stage. Please join me in welcoming Chamber President and CEO, Jim Rooney. Good afternoon. Thank you, Lisa. You always bring such energy and passion to our celebration of Greater Boston Women. I want to wish a heartfelt congratulation to our 2021 Pinnacle Honorees. We're so fortunate to have you leading our community in so many ways, especially now. In 2020, during a pandemic, an economic crisis, and the country's reckoning with racism, these Pinnacle Honorees led with empathy and determination. Over the past year, they saved lives, advocated for change, and championed equity when we needed it most. This is the time to celebrate and express gratitude to our Pinnacle awardees from the business community. But we know that for these and our previous honorees, this is not the Pinnacle, but a Pinnacle, one of many triumphs and peaks that these leaders will have during their careers. This program and yesterday's special workshop sessions would not be possible without some real champions from Boston's business community. I'd like to start by thanking today's sponsors, all of you long-running partners of this event. Thank you to Blue Cross Blue Shield of Massachusetts, Seifarth Shaw, and the TJX companies. Thank you to our media sponsor, WBZ-TV, not only for sharing the incomparable Lisa Hughes with us, but also for ensuring that this program reaches a wider audience. I also want to recognize the past Pinnacle honorees. We continue to be impressed by you even years after winning the award. You've reached countless more Pinnacles. We would usually have our past Pinnacle honorees stand up so we can give you applause, but I hope everyone will join me in sending messages in the chat feature. I want to extend a special thank you to Morgan Stanley and Lisa Matthews for supporting the participation of the Pinnacle awardees and doing it year after year. I'd also like to recognize our Chamber Board Chair, Micho Spring, who continues to lead the Chamber in new and exciting directions. Micho is the Chamber's first Latina, serving as Chair of the Board of Directors, and we're proud of her decades of groundbreaking and glass ceiling shattering achievements. And I want to recognize our Women's Network Advisory Board Chair, Yvonne Garcia, who in her third year as chair has made a decade's worth of impact on the chamber and the Commonwealth. My last thank you is a great big one to my team at the Greater Boston Chamber for their thoughtfulness, time, and effort that they put into every detail of this program. In particular, I want to recognize our all-female programs team, Celia Richa, Luz Aregasis, Hannah Zen, and Angelica Medina. I see the Chamber's role as leveraging the voices of our Women's Network champions to make Boston the best place for women to thrive in all aspects of their lives, but particularly in the workplace. Now please join me in welcoming the Chair of the Women's Network Advisory Board and Chief of Staff to the CEO and Global Head of Communications for State Street, Yvonne Garcia. 
Thank you, Jim, for that warm welcome, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm honored to be here with all of you today on behalf of the Women's Network Advisory Board, celebrating yet another Pinnacle Awards. Whether you have attended this event in the past or are joining us for the first time, like half of the attendees at our gatherings this past year, welcome. Our Women's Network is one of a kind. Here, you'll find a diverse and collaborative group of more than 3,000 and growing women and male allies at all levels of their careers, from all backgrounds, sectors, industries, and professions, working together to ensure that Greater Boston becomes the best place for professional women to thrive. And as I reflect on my time the past two years as chair, I'm so proud of what this community continues to achieve together. A year ago, I announced a goal to attain 25% of racial diversity on our board by the end of 2020. Well, today I am proud to report that we have achieved that goal. So you see, progress like this must continue for the greater Boston business community to ensure that we are representative of this great region. Diversity of thought and lived experience is critical to the success of any business and community. Our Pinnacle honorees this year embody the perseverance and strength that we as a community need now more than ever. In fact, if you were to research each honoree, you will find tangible examples of heroic acts, each conducted in their respective organizations and in their communities to keep their stakeholders safe, engaged, informed, and motivated. They each have expressed awareness of fears that their stakeholders may be feeling, concern for their well-being, and confidence in their plans to help navigate through the ongoing crisis, all of which are qualities in a leader that I know each of us appreciate and need at this time. For that, thank you. Equally as important is to recognize our rising leaders, the next generation of future Pinnacle Award recipients. I know that we are joined today by the Chamber's 2021 Women's Leadership Program cohorts, as well as many alumni. You were all nominated for this program because you have many of the characteristics of today's honorees. My fellow board members and I can't wait to see what you do next. So with that, thank you. Thank you all for joining us today. And congratulations again to all of our extraordinary honorees. I'd now like to welcome Lisa back to begin our awards presentation. Thank you, Yvonne. Now it's time for the best part of the day, presenting the award. So let's get right to it. Our first award is for Emerging Executive, and our recipient is Nia Grace, owner and operator of Daryl's Corner Bar and Kitchen and co-founder of the Boston Black Hospitality Coalition. Nia leads her restaurant by focusing on her greatest strength, understanding and embracing human behavior to provide a high-touch experience for her customers. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, Nia co-founded the Boston Black Hospitality Coalition to preserve bars and restaurants that are committed to advancing diversity and welcoming the city's many black residents. To young female leaders entering the workforce, Nia offers this piece of advice. Our letdowns often make way for our greatest gifts to shine through our destined adventures. Nia, in recognition of your contributions to Boston, we are proud to present you with a 2021 Pinnacle Award for Emerging Executive. Thank you, Lisa, for your generous introduction. As a woman, and as a woman of color specifically, I was born with innate challenges to dream and realize achievement within this society. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit, I was taken aback, but I was not a stranger to the racial and economic inequities that the pandemic unveiled. In fact, I was fiercely reminded of generations long plight for equity and advancement. The only difference now is that I was joined by a nation who could finally empathize with my pain and positioning. No other time in the history of this country have we ever experienced a raw undressing of a system that was designed to make a few and break the rest. This reality, my birthright one might call it, only emblazoned a history of resilience and resourcefulness, something that I am deeply proud of. The pandemic truly showed what we were made of, and it was a comforting reminder of where I came from and the tough decisions I had to make throughout my development as a woman, an entrepreneur, and a leader. I was reminded of the day that I finally decided to say yes. Yes, I will be that individual in the room that looks different from others yet still believes that I belong. Yes, 
My upbringing may have been challenging, but it was just the battleground I needed to live out my purpose. Yes, individuals like myself may have been ignored throughout history, but ignorance does not equal allowance, and I will not accept the narrative created for me. Yes, I will go after that job or career in a male-dominated space, and I'll soar. Yes, I will believe in myself enough to know that I can do anything that I want to do, not what someone tells me I should want to do. When people tell you anything is possible, believe them. I am the face of possibilities. I am the inspiration that I needed growing up, and it is my duty and privilege to reach back and elevate the generation to come. Good leadership requires selflessness, discernment, and humility, and I am grateful for those who have trusted me and encouraged me. This honors is theirs alone. Congratulations once again, Nia. Next, we present the Pinnacle Award for Achievement in Entrepreneurship, and our recipient is Jennifer Harrington, president of Hatch. Since founding Hatch, a federally certified woman business enterprise, Jennifer has earned a reputation for working with top brands to clearly define their goals and identify their unique stories. In addition to leading the company, Jennifer serves on boards for Massachusetts College of Art and Design, the Boston Arts Academy, and WGBH, to name just a few. Jennifer recommends to all other professionals, find a mentor and be a mentor. Model the behaviors you admire and share what you've learned with wild generosity, which is a beautiful way to put that. We want to thank you for your leadership, Jennifer, and congratulations. Thank you, Lisa. It's an honor to be here with you and my fellow honorees. If I asked you to picture entrepreneurialism in greater Boston, I imagine many might think of a high-tech startup, a biotech firm, or the bright ideas coming out of our colleges and universities. Probably not an advertising agency whose currency is creativity and storytelling. And it's for that reason that I'm most proud and grateful for this award. I believe creativity has never been more valuable than it is today, but being a creative is not always appreciated as a job title, and an art or design degree is not always viewed as an on-ramp to a successful career. I graduated with an art history degree, and initially I thought my career prospects would be limited. It took me a few years and a short stint selling art in a gallery to understand that the ability to talk with people about what we see in a piece of art and the capability to sell concepts and ideas are actually valuable skills. That recognition turned into a quest for a career path. So thanks to the many who shared their career stories with me back then, the world of the creative economy was revealed. I learned there were companies fueled by creatives and there were whole industries capitalizing on creativity. Design shops, fashion brands, digital firms, industrial design houses, and advertising agencies. My limited opportunities became a world of limitless opportunity. And with an internship at a local agency, I took my first steps into a career in advertising. I've been fortunate to speak with many young professionals in 2020, including my oldest daughter who graduated from college last year. Most are struggling to connect their career dreams and aspirations with the reality of finding a job today. And what I heard is the disconnect between what they envisioned and where they are is so vast, it's hard to even know how to get started. And the idea that anything can happen, which for some of us was always an opening for optimism, today is a stark reminder that things can get even worse. So I'm here today not as a recipient, but as a representative to young professionals just getting started. Some of what you may have lost in 2020, you've definitely gained in terms of resilience, adaptability, and creativity. And I feel quite confident that this time period, as difficult and heartbreaking as it's been, will be a springboard for a whole new generation of entrepreneurs. And to the diverse creative talent out there, maybe struggling to rationalize an art or a design degree, or wondering whether there's a successful path in the creative economy, there is, and you are crucial. There are agencies like Hatch, startups and established companies, nonprofits and collaboratives that need fresh voices and fresh perspectives like yours to be successful. 
Our collective success is inextricably tied. I am incredibly proud to be a member of the chamber and a recipient of this prestigious award, especially after last year. 2020 was difficult for so many businesses. So I'd like to close by acknowledging the incredible acts of kindness, support, and goodwill that the greater Boston business community has shown to one another. Let's work together to show the same kindness to the next generation of diverse talent and entrepreneurs in Boston. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer, and congratulations again. And may we all tap into that creativity for good this year and going forward. Next up, we present the Pinnacle Award for Achievement in Healthcare and Life Sciences. And our honoree is Dr. Jesse Gaeta, Chief Medical Officer at Boston Healthcare for the Homeless Program. Dr. Gaeta oversees the health center's clinical practice that serves 11,000 people every year in more than 130,000 visits across dozens of clinical sites. Dr. Gaeta has dedicated herself to advocacy for and with people with substance abuse disorders and is most recently proud of her work designing a comprehensive framework for the health center's COVID-19 response. Dr. Gaeta offers the following advice to professionals entering the healthcare or social services sectors. Relationship is everything. Your relationship with the patient or the person you hope to help is the basis of all healing. Dr. Gaeta, we so appreciate your leadership more than ever in this crisis. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Lisa. It's such a huge honor to receive this award and I am deeply grateful. I think it's difficult to accept this recognition of achievement at a time when I feel so acutely that my colleagues and I have so much more work ahead of us at both my own program and across the entire healthcare system. And by that work, of course, I refer to the COVID-19 pandemic, which has been hands down the, the greatest challenge of my career. I've managed to just barely keep my head above water by tapping into a deep sense of determination, as well as the love and support of my wife and two daughters, um, a good exercise bike, and a really sweet new puppy named Nala. As my public health colleagues and I reflect on the enormous efforts that the first COVID wave required of us in Massachusetts, we now find ourselves in the midst of a daunting second wave and the beginning of a mass vaccination campaign that at least in my own career has had no parallel. One of the things I've had to confront is the deep skepticism and mistrust expressed by many people of color within our COVID care spaces and isolation sites and now in our vaccination efforts. It's been difficult over the years to reckon with how my own profession of medicine has harmed people of color. And as I continue to hear from patients about their experiences of racism in healthcare, I've had to dig deeper and examine how my own implicit bias negatively affects the care I provide and the systems that I design. And for the disproportionately high number of COVID cases who are people of color, their health and survival will depend on the medical establishment confronting significant histories of mistrust and inequities in both resources and outcomes of care, which have been severe and predictable. So in the weeks and months and years to come, I look forward to working harder than ever with my colleagues to build trust in our healthcare system among people of color. And it's only by doing so that I believe we'll be able to fully heal from this pandemic and to emerge as a more resilient community. Well-deserved, Dr. Gaeta, congratulations. Next, the Pinnacle Award for Achievement in Arts and Education. And our recipient is Dr. Pam Edinger, president of Bunker Hill Community College. Dr. Edinger's service in the community college movement spans more than 25 years, with several senior posts in academics and student affairs, communications and policy, and executive leadership. During the pandemic, Dr. Edinger continues to highlight unique challenges facing community college students. She led Bunker Hill Community College's quick pivot to online learning for 1,700 courses, which included distributing technology to students and keeping the college food pantry open, which was so important. 
To women entering the workforce, Dr. Edinger says, attempt whatever task when you think you are 75% ready, and then find a mentor to help you learn the other 25%. Dr. Edinger, your dedication to endless learning and every student is critical to the success of our region. Congratulations on your 2021 Pinnacle Award. Thank you, Lisa. I'm so proud to be acknowledged with the Pinnacle Award in the category of Education and the Arts. For an immigrant who came to the States in the 1970s through family chain migration and has since adopted this country as my own, this award signals that I have fulfilled a part of my American dream. In the immigrant community, it takes more than one generation to change our social and economic trajectory. My parents brought their children to the United States for better education and a broader horizon. They in turn sacrificed their middle-class life to work long hours. My father was a Chinese restaurant waiter all his life, and my mother took in garment work at home to be with the children after school. Without language, without status, they put three of us through college and supported us to become professionals. They bought houses, drove cars, paid taxes. They were the backbone of our community. Today, I stand on their shoulders to lead the community college movement. So the next generation immigrants will have choices, will have language, and will see a broader horizon. If my parents had the time and resources to attend community college when they came to Miami, their lives would have been very different. Immigrants like my parents are everywhere in greater Boston, raising children like me. I hope you see them and make them visible, even if you honor my work for today. I do my work for them. I do my work so every immigrant and native child will have access to affordable higher education and be touched by the grace and the power of the arts. My parents will be very proud of me today. Well-deserved, Dr. Edinger. Congratulations and thank you again. Next, we have the Pinnacle Award for Achievement in Management Nonprofit. And our recipient is Arlene Fortunato, Senior Vice President of Advancement for the Greater Boston Food Bank. At the Greater Boston Food Bank, Arlene leads a team responsible for fundraising, government relations, marketing, and more. Last year, Arlene led internal efforts to meet the challenges of COVID-19's impact on food insecurity in Eastern Massachusetts. And that included raising $60 million in eight months and encouraging public awareness of the issue. Arlene recommends that young women who are entering the workforce be intentional and authentic. Bring your whole self to work, she says. Arlene, we thank you for being authentic for being so helpful to so many people and encouraging change when we need it most. Congratulations on your 2021 Pinnacle Award. Thank you, Lisa. And to my sister awardees, I am humbled to be in your company. I never had a plan, never had a vision, never had a goal, other than a vague notion that I wanted to do good work. Where I come from, a working class neighborhood in South Philadelphia, nobody had a plan. The idea was that we would all eventually get married, have kids, live two blocks away from our parents, and so it goes. And without fully understanding why, I knew that could never be my life. So after finishing college, I left. I joined the Jesuit Volunteer Corps for what was supposed to be one year, and I moved to Boston. That was 1977. I'm still here. In the ensuing 44 years, I have built my life and career by putting one foot in front of the other, all in service to my vague notion. And indeed, in that time, I have been privileged to do very good work in some of the city's most effective nonprofit organization. And thanks to Catherine D'Amato, I am especially grateful to be at the Greater Boston Food Bank, doing the job I feel I was born to do. Two things I learned along the way. In every and any situation, I had to be authentically me. And if it wasn't fun, I didn't want to do it. Surprisingly, Boston turned out to be the perfect place for me to thrive. Despite being an outsider, an outspoken advocate, and a lesbian, I have gained access to the highest echelons of Boston's power structure. From corporate boardrooms to Harvard-affiliated medical centers, to teaching a graduate course at BU with only a BA, to the mayor's office, all without a plan. I have always had my seat at the table. 
and it helped that along the way I met some incredible and courageous people who saw me before I saw myself, who believed in me and were willing to take a risk on me and ultimately extract the very best from me as a partner, a mentor, and a servant leader. I learned to be in my moments and most importantly, to go with the zeitgeist. I live by the words of my hero, the late Saul Alinsky, author of Rules for Radicals, who said, this is the world as it is. This is where you start. And if I have any advice to offer, it is just that. Allow yourself to be moved by the moment. Don't be afraid to speak out and speak up. Follow your heart. Claim and embrace your power, especially as young women. Be the best you you can be. Well done, Arlene. Congratulations, and thank you for helping to meet such a critical need in our community. And now we're excited to present the Pinnacle Award for Achievement in Management, Government, to the President of the Massachusetts State Senate, Karen Spilka. Now, since ascending to the role of Senate President, Senator Spilka has taken a collaborative approach to the pressing issues facing the Commonwealth, including education, climate change, housing, transportation, and mental health care. And throughout her career, she has advocated for equal access and led statewide and regional efforts to make it easier to start, run, and keep businesses in Massachusetts. Senate President Spilka, thank you for your dedication to advancing the success of the Commonwealth and everyone who lives here. Congratulations on this Pinnacle Award. Thank you so much for this wonderful award. It is my greatest honor and privilege to lead the Massachusetts State Senate. And I am so grateful once again for the faith and trust my colleagues have put into me this session. I have often said that Massachusetts leads America in many ways. And in these dark and difficult times, it is more important than ever that the Commonwealth serve as both a light and a beacon to our nation. And that the Massachusetts State Senate lead by example. As millions around our country have suffered losses from the COVID-19 pandemic and the economic fallout, they have learned a lesson that I have held dear for a very long time, that good government matters. My approach to government comes from my fundamental beliefs that government can and should be a force for good in people's lives. That collaboration and compromise from people who bring diverse experiences and backgrounds to their work creates a finished product that is much richer and much stronger in the long run. And that as legislators and leaders, we have a responsibility to govern with compassion, integrity, and humility. Facing the crisis of COVID-19, I created a bipartisan working group to engage on every aspect of the state's COVID response, from concerns about childcare to personal protective equipment, to the reopening of businesses, all the way through to the vaccine rollout and we will continue to be deeply engaged. Because now more than ever, it is our job as legislators, as leaders, to say what we mean and then get the job done. As we begin our work this Senate session, we do so against a backdrop of national hardship and those who would seek to divide us along political, ideological, or racial lines. At this crucial, precarious time in our nation's history, I believe that there is no room in government for us versus them. And here in Massachusetts, at least, there is no them, there is only us. And I promise to continue to work for all of the people of our great commonwealth because we all rise or fall together. 
So thank you again for this wonderful award. Congratulations to all the other awardees. And I wish all of you a very healthy and happy 2021. Thank you. Congratulations, Senate President Spilka. The Commonwealth is so lucky to have you leading in the Senate. Our next award is the Pinnacle Award for Achievement in Management Private. And our honoree is Kathy Horgan, Executive Vice President and Chief Human Resources and Corporate Citizenship Officer at State Street Corporation. Kathy's worked at State Street for almost 12 years, responsible for making sure that employees feel engaged, valued, and committed to the markets and the clients they serve. Over the past two years, she's focused on building on State Street's strong commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. This effort created the company's first ever chief diversity officer. Kathy advises women to be confident and show what you bring to your organization by being curious. She says, once people can see your substance and worth, have the courage to ask for what you want and deserve. Perfectly said, Kathy. For your leadership, we proudly present you with your 2021 Pinnacle Award. Thank you, Lisa. I am honored to be receiving the Pinnacle Award. Like many women, early on in my career in human resources, I was often told I was too nice. The implication always being that empathy, kindness, and trying to understand the perspectives of others were weaknesses that required fixing. I always found this feedback a little overwhelming and frankly confusing. I felt I had to change things about myself and how I interacted with others away from who I knew myself to be at heart. And I didn't understand why behaviors I saw as crucial to bringing out the best in those around me could somehow be bad. Over and over again, I received signals that being nice meant that I could not make hard decisions or deal with difficult situations. Once I even lost out on a job because of it, with a company telling me I did not get a role because they sensed I was just too nice. It happened again a few years later, and while I ended up getting the job, I actually had to meet with the general counsel for the sole purpose of proving that I was not too nice. Seriously. As my career progressed, it came up less frequently, but when it did, people who generally did not know me very well would say the same thing. She's too nice. I came to understand that this said more about their own biases than any shortcomings I might have. Now, it is true that as leaders become more senior, their empathy decreases, which is something that I actually worried about as my own responsibilities increased. Until this past year. In 2020, it became clear that being empathetic and nice were skills leaders needed to drive their teams through crisis. I found that listening putting yourself in another's shoes, over communicating and ensuring your employees feel safe and cared for actually motivated our team at State Street to do things that less than a year ago sounded crazy and seemed impossible. Putting those skills to work against the challenges of 2020 has allowed me to do some of the best work I have done in my career. And more importantly, it has allowed me to connect with colleagues across State Street in ways I never have before. And so to be receiving this award for that kind of work is not only an immense honor, but validation that leading with empathy matters and that the days of fear and intimidation being considered effective leadership are over. As we enter the beginning of the end of the pandemic, it's clear that NICE is now normal. Thank you so much for this recognition. I am truly humbled. Congratulations again, Kathy. Our next Pinnacle Award is for Achievement in the Professions, and we are honored to present this award to Marianne Harrison, President and Chief Executive Officer of John Hancock. Marianne is the first female CEO in John Hancock's 157-year history, working to lead one of the largest life insurers and fastest growing asset managers in the United States. One of her recent key achievements was the launch of John Hancock Aspire, the only insurance designed for Americans with diabetes. Marianne says she loves a good challenge, which is no surprise considering the way John Hancock was able to navigate 2020. Marianne firmly believes that to be successful in today's business world, you have to do change well. True leaders not only embrace change, they champion it and they lead it. Marianne, your mark on the Boston region and beyond makes you incredibly deserving of this 2021 Pinnacle Award. Congratulations. 
Thank you, Lisa. In a year unlike any others, leaders everywhere have been tested. They've had to dig deep to find resilience, to create solutions, and to inspire those they lead. To me, that's what true leadership is all about. Not only taking on challenges, but truly embracing challenges and the opportunities they represent. It's about going beyond embracing change to champion and lead it. This has been a common theme throughout my career. I quickly learned that to be successful in business or any walk of life, you have to do change well. That's why it's the first piece of advice that I'll offer to women who are starting their careers. I remind them that obstacles are as inevitable as anything they'll encounter on their journey. And the sooner they're able to frame obstacles as an opportunity, the closer they'll be to realizing their dreams. In 2008, I just started my first experience running a business. My family and I moved to a new city and a new country. Taking that job felt like a huge risk, but it also felt like the right thing to do. At the end of that year, the Great Recession hit. It was a time of tremendous upheaval. Interest rates plummeted and the business had to make drastic changes. I was able to try out a whole host of new management techniques that I wasn't familiar with. It was something I really learned from, not in spite of the challenges, but because of them. With the benefit of hindsight, I can see that having to navigate a global crisis after taking a personal career risk helped prepare me for today's ongoing global crisis. Much as today's crisis will help prepare us all for those of tomorrow. I know that everyone listening can relate in one way or another. Although our paths are always unique, we share the common experience of constant learning through confronting challenges head on. It's a process of taking risks, being willing to fail and embracing change. When we find inspiration in the example of others and in our own resilience, the sky is the limit. I truly appreciate this recognition from the Chamber and congratulations to all honorees. Congratulations, Marianne. And now it is time for our final Pinnacle Award presentation of the day, the Pinnacle Award for Lifetime Achievement. And this special honor goes to Pamela Everhart, Senior Vice President and Head of Regional Public Affairs and Community Relations at Fidelity Investments. As a 26-year Fidelity Investments veteran with financial services expertise, Pam oversees Fidelity's state and local government relationships, public affairs, and community relations activities at its Boston headquarters and across other regions. As a leader in the community, Pam is one of the 19 Massachusetts black and brown executives who launched the new Commonwealth Racial Equity and Social Justice Fund to drive transformative social changes to address systemic racism and racial inequity. She was also appointed by Boston Mayor Marty Walsh to the steering committee of the Boston Racial Equity Fund. An accomplishment that Pam is most proud of is the delivery of financial literacy to more than 130,000 middle school students in underserved communities in the regions where Fidelity has a footprint and a commitment. Pam has one single piece of advice to women in the workforce. Always put R before T, relationship before task. Pam strongly believes it is critical to take the time to develop a relationship with the people with whom you're working before you get after the task. Please join me now in the chat feature to congratulate Pam and Pam for your far reaching impact on the region, both in and out of the office. It is an honor to present you with the 2021 Pinnacle Award for Lifetime Achievement. Thank you, Lisa, and congratulations to my fellow honorees. I am humbled and honored to accept the 2021 Pinnacle Lifetime Achievement Award. In the words of the unbought and unbossed Shirley Chisholm, Service is the rent we pay for the privilege of living on this earth. Throughout my life, I have been encompassed by a cloud of tireless advocates, many of whom have been women and champion for others on multiple levels, both in the workplace and the community. Their examples of servant leadership fuel my passion to be of service to others and reinforce my belief that we all have the power to help change someone's life. My change agent is Mrs. Benny Wiley. I met Benny 30 years ago at the start of my legal career. I was a mere first year associate at the global law firm of Ropes and Gray and new to Boston. 
Biddy opened many doors for me, introducing me to other leaders in Greater Boston, both in the public and private sectors and the nonprofit community. Her quiet, selfless act of service was empowering as she modeled the type of leader I wanted to be. A leader who recognizes that no one makes it alone and the greatest way to achieve success is to help others succeed. I believe service starts in underserved communities, especially giving youth access to financial literacy to help them toward whatever goals they have in life. It is teaching Marlon, a middle schooler in Roxbury, about financial concepts that will set his family on a path to financial security. It is Arielle, a young Girl Scout, so inspired by a financial education workshop and the receipt of her Fidelity Let It Grow investment patch that she asked her mom for stocks for Christmas. I believe our lives are limited and lifted by what we believe is important and the choices we make. We should be asking ourselves, what might we achieve if we spent more time lifting one another? Growing up in Texas, my mother taught me to face every opportunity or challenge with the most fervent intent to change situations around you by elevating to a higher level, to make the choice whether to be the carrot, the egg, or the coffee bean. Each of these objects had to face a challenge, boiling water. However, each react differently. The carrots go in strong and hard and unrelenting, but after being subjected to the boiling water, they soften and become weak. The egg goes in fragile. Its thin outer shell protects the liquid interior. But after sitting through the boiling water, its inside becomes hardened. Then you have the ground coffee beans, which are unique. After they are in the boiling water, they change the water. So I ask, which are you? Are you the carrot that seems strong, but with pain and adversity, you wilt and become soft and lose your strength? Are you the egg with a stiff spirit and a hardened heart? Or are you like the coffee bean, which changes the hot water, the very substance that brings the challenge? Living a life of service, I have learned that if we are to make a difference in the lives of others, we must commit to be a bridge between hope and what is possible. And we must acknowledge that no one does it alone. Even the most dynamic leaders require a team to help push them to their absolute best. To my Fidelity colleagues and my team, in the words of the African philosophy in Butu, I say to you, I am because you are. Thank you. Congratulations, Pam, and thank you. And you just gave us one more reason to love coffee. We are so inspired by you and all of the exceptional leaders we honor today. You are all examples of the many talented women who work in Greater Boston, and that includes so many of you who are joining us today. Let's have one final round of applause for our 2020 honorees virtually. It's thunderous. If we're all together, we're going to shake the walls next time. Take a moment to share your words of congratulation in the chat right now. I also want to again recognize all of the amazing past Pinnacle Award winners who are tuning in. And I'm sure you'd agree that you have an incredible new cohort joining you this year. A few final words of thanks before we go. First, I just want to thank the Greater Boston Chamber of Commerce again for the opportunity to be part of such a wonderful celebration. Uh, it is just such a gift to be able to honor these women and to elevate them in such a wonderfully public and celebratory way. To our corporate sponsors, Blue Cross, Blue Shield of Massachusetts, Seifarth Shaw, the TJX companies, Lisa Matthews, and Morgan Stanley, we so appreciate you. To my family at WBZ for serving as the media sponsor for this fabulous event, thank you. To our many corporate sponsors, to Yvonne Garcia and the Women's Network Advisory Board, you are amazing, you work so hard to put this together. And to all of you who joined us today on behalf of the Chamber, thank you so much. Have a wonderful afternoon.